what is the variation in the circuitry across the population? Yeah, so that's fascinating. There's been a lot of uh, studies done on that using techniques uh, using MRI scans. Uh, so for example, you can have a person go in the scanner and uh, you can actually map the thickness of their gray matter across the whole right, using a technique called voxel-based morphometry. So they take all the little voxels in the scan and they look at how thick the gray matter is in different areas. And they can compare people who have more resilience versus less resilience. Uh, there was a famous study done, uh, I guess, about a decade ago now, where uh, they, they did exactly the question we're asking about. They took a whole bunch of people who had suffered horrible adverse childhood experiences. There's actually a, a psychological questionnaire called the Adverse Childhood Experiences uh, Questionnaire. So all these people, you know, had been through horrible traumatic experiences, and yet a subset of them had never gone on to develop post-traumatic stress disorder or depression or any other sort of classic uh, you know, axis one mental disorder. And the question was, what's going on with them? Uh, it turns out that there were specific areas of the frontal lobes that had thicker gray matter in these areas uh, we were pinpointing. Specifically, there's an area we can get into called the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, but it, essentially a network of areas in the brain uh, who seemed, if you just had by luck of the draw, you happened to have more gray matter in these areas, then you were more likely to be resilient to even quite horrible adverse childhood experiences. And is it luck of the draw, a genetic issue, or is it environmental practices or social practices? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. There are, you know, the literature on resilience suggests that there's a lot to this. So, you know, the, there is, although there is some genetic component to resilience that uh, I think that is greatly overshadowed by one's environment and one's psychology and one's upbringing and the practices that one implements. Um, early adverse childhood experiences are really bad for people's resilience, uh, whereas mm. growing up in a support of childhood environment and having social supports and sort of a calm parenting environment and all the rest of it can often provide a person with quite a lot of resilience that they can tap into later on in life.